Hi everyone. In Orthodoxy there are many, many gifts that are given to different people according to their own spiritual disposition. We might consider, for instance, the category that we normally call the Fools for Christ. Definitely not something for everyone, and very few people have taken upon themselves this uh, great burden and spiritual gift, but there are others as well. One of the most interesting is the category that we call the stylites or stylites. These are people who perch themselves up on a great and high pillar of some kind for many years as the basis of their ascetical existence. Now we've probably all heard of St. Simeon the Stylite, uh, St. Daniel the Stylite, but perhaps fewer have heard of a man named Luke, St. Luke the Stylite. Now Luke was born uh, during the time of Emperor Romanos I at around 879 AD in the Anatolican uh, Thema, when a Thema was a military civilian province, and this one was found in Southwest Asia, which of course is now Turkey. From an early age, he had everything that he needed. His parents, although peasants, were very well off and provided him with everything that he needed. So he entered the army at a fairly early age, around 17 or 18, and was going to war against the Bulgarians. Now, he was lucky to escape with his life because there were about 10,000 people that perished in this particular battle. And some friends of his who were also in battle with him were disciples of another stylite who is unnamed, but told Luke about these things, and it began to pique his entrance, his interest about the monastic life. So after uh, he got out of the army, and in gratitude for God, he entered in some fairly severe ascetical ascetical uh, exercises, and eventually became uh, ordained a priest. After which he went back to the army for a period of about six years. Uh, as a chaplain. So yes, indeed, there were chaplains even back in the 8 and 900 AD uh, time period. Luke was someone, though, who was not satisfied with this, although he was very courageous and he was someone who was uh, beloved by all and tried to go out of his way to help people, yet he had an intense desire for the life of solitude. Uh, for a true monastic existence. And so this took him around to two or three uh, different places. Uh, initially, he was on a 12-foot pillar, uh, and then he went back to his own hometown, and he was in a cave for a while where he was beset by demons and bad insects that were said to have left ulcers all over his body. And yet he finally left and went to the town of Chalcedon, where he ascended a gigantic pillar and spent the next 45 years of his life on that pillar, finally reposing in the year 979 at the age of 100. So on December 11th, we commemorate this remarkable man, trying our best to understand exactly what it is that he was trying to accomplish because there are no stylites today and probably haven't been for hundreds of years and yet their witness is quite profound in orthodoxy. It was that radical differentiation from other members of society whereas they wanted to engage in their ascetical contests away apart from everyone even though ultimately people understood what they were doing and flocked to them for advice. The same was true for St. Luke, and he gave all sorts of advice to all sorts of people that would come to him. In fact, it was said that by his prayers, the healings that people received were so great that his percentage of healing was greater than that which was found in the hospitals in the area. 
God gives his gifts in many strange and many varied ways. Certainly not everyone is called to be a stylite, even in those days when we know of more of them than we certainly do today. And we wonder, what was this really all about? Well, it was a certain way of separation while yet maintaining a connection with the world around them. As I referred to it as a radical otherness, it was a way that the stylite could be alone. He could engage in his ascetical exercises that, of course, are not for everyone, but which in this case were gifts of God to these particular individual people who attempted such a thing. Yet at the same time, he served as a witness that as Christians we are to be, at least to some degree, separate from the world, pulled apart, raised high above it as the stylites were, in order to come closer to God and then take the gifts that they got from God and pass them on to the rest of the people. The stylites were an incredible group of people, uh, probably with the exception of maybe a few, the most ascetically oriented uh, people that have ever appeared in the Orthodox Church. They were wanting to contemplate God so much without distraction, without being amidst the people that were going to bother them so much. In other words, they could control the environment. They could respond to people when they wanted to respond to people and only on that terms, and the people, of course, accepted this. St. Luke himself at one point put a pebble under his tongue so that it would impede his speech because he felt that people talking and talking foolishly and with so much vanity was one of the things that led them down into perdition. And instead of being quiet and listening for that still small voice that we know is the voice of God, the voice of the Holy Spirit. So let's have a great wonder at these amazing people who are able to do such things, that the gifts of God were so great, that their calling was so profound, and yet so limited in number, but yet they still set an example for all of us. In order to follow Jesus Christ, we must, to some degree at least, separate ourselves from the things of the world and seek Him alone. Bye-bye.